I'll tell you why. You guys have no care in life. Like, you get braces. You go through all this pain, right? Yeah. You have them on for years. Come closer, too, to the mic. You got to talk right to it. Okay. Can y'all hear me? Talk your oh, shit yeah. like you that. You can hear yourself, Okay. Too. Yeah, I hear myself. It's like you speak it in my ear. So, now. basically, my issue... My issue... No, you straight. ...with people that um, wear braces... Is the fact that you go through all this, you invest time and money mm-hmm. to go get braces, to go get straight teeth, and you get the braces off, and then you don't wear your retainers, and then they're complaining about having braces again. Like, why did you go through all that? Because you got braces like five years ago, and you lost your shit. You expect you somebody can to always them, five- though. You you're not like you're okay, not your priorities off, not are not all in of us line. Have Nike deals. Hold okay? on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold not up. all of us could Did you have braces? No, I've never had braces. So, Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, this is yeah, all natural. This is all natural. Wow, mashallah. This is my mom. But Why don't you just I get have... another three hundred dollar retainer? She has a beautiful smile no, naturally. No, but like he, and like, she out here talking shit about niggas. With... I let me be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I had braces too, but you're right. I agree with you. Everyone though, is I it not everyone you. that gets braces? They're talking about a year later. Oh, mm-hmm. I need to get them no, again. I was hell bent when I say hell bent on wearing my retainer. Cause I had Good. braces. I had braces for four years. I got two teeth removed. Bella so much sahib. Bella, do you still wear yours? Nah. Why the fuck? Do you? Ha- oh, oh. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So I'm good though. My teeth are not losing. My yeah, shit's your straight. Teeth are straight. You know what I'm saying? But like, so I wore it for like four years though. I lost them. I broke them. You know when you have retainers, you take them off, you put it on the, yeah, on the, the napkin, and then you, know? you, you throw them away, and you add, you do try to do a little. I love how she knows, like she. Yeah. Yeah. I have them. so many people in my life who yeah, have braces, braces yeah. you know, and it makes me upset. I think that's where my vendetta comes from. It makes me upset because I'm like, you invested all this time and money into mm. getting braces, and you just don't you, care. You just let it go. Yeah, this, is gonna, this is going to be a fun one. We got to introduce the guest. Hey, yes, y'all, sir. welcome back to Ghost Talk. It's Hamza the Truth. Hello, everybody. It's Mohammed Sharif. And we have a goat. We've had you on Sincerely Honest. Yeah. She talks shit about people with braces. She's made it. She's big Stop. time now. Mashallah. <laughs> Ifra. Hi, guys. Ooh. Thank you for pulling up. Yeah. Seeing thanks the for small guys. Me. We appreciate what? you. Y'all, my people. Hey. <laughs> He try to he try to do this thing. Yeah, here, you, feel you me? see, don't do that. Just ignore it. Just ignore it. How have you been though? I've been great. Alhamdulillah, I can't complain. I'm alive. I'm mm-hmm. here. Since the last time we talked was damn, that's almost two years ago. If I think about it, yeah, yeah it a lot has changed. What's up? I know you got. We can keep the big stuff later, but yeah. like, let's talk about the small stuff. First what of all, changed? let's talk about how you feel it. Like. How how oh, are we you? gotta talk about our feelings? Yeah. yeah, that's important. Like I know, like she big time like and that. all, but we gotta we gotta. He, he goes. A, this is, very a human, much about feelings. this is a human being right no, here I like in front that of us, though. mashallah. You know, so how you how you feeling? What what has changed? What has grown? Um, what's kind of different for you in those two years? Just kind of for yeah. you. Well, I'm feeling great. Thanks mashallah. for asking me. I think it's really important to ask people how they are. Um, no, I'm just saying, no shade. But I just feel like no this shade. Is just no, shade today. no, no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> but I just wanted to point that out. It's no, really good. good. Like, yeah. like I like to ask people how they are. Um, but I'm really good. Alhamdulillah. Um, mashallah. Definitely a lot has changed in the last... Oh, well, I shouldn't say a lot has changed, but things have happened <laughs> in the last two years. Yeah. Um, but I, I can't complain. I'm grateful. Um, it's been good things, bad things. You know, life's just a roller coaster. So I'm just grateful to be alive and to be doing what I love. Mashallah. You're really doing what you love. I am. And you fucking it up too. Thanks. Mashallah. Period. 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 Yes. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> is um so for for the people that don't know, you're a model. I am, yeah. Mashallah. Is is this something that you've always wanted to know to do? Like, when did you know that? Like, I want to be a model. I want to do this. Yeah, it's definitely been something I always wanted to do. Like my entire life, I think from as long as I can remember, I've always had people approach me and they're like, "Oh my God, you're so pretty! Like, are mm-hmm. you a model?" Or like, "Oh my gosh, like." you look like a model are you a model so i think i heard that for a very long time and then growing up i was also a kid who like i really just tried everything like i used to if i like something like i'm gonna go for it you know um so it was something i always heard but it was something that i didn't think was attainable like to me it was just like you know you just dream like yeah i want to be like naomi campbell walking it on the runway or like i went but it was just i didn't think it was attainable um it was just a dream you know um, so I think it became more attainable in like the last five years, which is actually really mind blowing. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes I have to like pinch myself cause yeah. I'm like, wow, like 
it's actually like surreal that you're like doing something that you've dreamt of and mm-hmm. it's like real life happening so yeah it's definitely something i've always wanted to do my entire life i just never thought it was possible for multiple reasons um but i'm grateful that i'm doing it mashallah, mashallah. Yeah. so like during your upbringing just kind of just growing up mm-hmm. um how much was was fashion because mashallah like, you're very well dressed you got a sense of style you got your own sense of fashion and like we we give flowers on this on this podcast as well somali women are killing killing it, it. killing it like just not not with uh, just in general in the general, fashion industry 100%. just in clothing getting dressed whatever it may be like they're doing a thing you know what i'm saying so big shout out to them mashallah Absolutely. but um what was that like growing up did you have your own style i need because i remember growing up like i had to wear um it's crazy that i think about it i had to wear the mom jeans the big old baggy yeah, jeans but that's in right now I, I, it's, that's what i was gonna get to so <laughs> but when i was a kid what was in was them skinny jeans yep. them tight ass skinny jeans and my mom was not having it <laughs> no welcome over to see today Wow, my brother, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor gang. Uh, yeah. Taylor gang, yeah. Taylor gang. Yeah. yeah. They used to be like, what I shall swell kill all the the rips and everything. Bro. But it was it was it was different and it was it was like a, a sort of an age of like, how do I make my own style and, and dress how I want to dress? But yeah. like Hoya gotta be okay with it too, low key, you know what I'm saying? She used to love the mom jeans. I don't know what it was, but now the mom jeans are in, baggy stuff, you know, not wearing Man, people used to wear the tightest shit back then. It's crazy what a lot of you think about, especially the guys. But it was crazy though. Before that, it was really baggy too. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it, cause she knows fashion. It transitions. It'll, yeah. Now watch, like give it a couple of years, folks will go back. Yeah, it's gonna go back to the tights, and there's gonna Absolutely. be a new go back to the tights. Yeah, the new. I'm not gonna be a part of that <laughs> shit. You feel what I'm saying? But um, yeah, what was that like? Just developing your own style. Yeah, I think um, growing up, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was also, I was always, I should say, into like fashion. But like when I was younger, I just liked trying different stuff on. So like I would go in my closet and put stuff together, but Hoy was not going. Like my mom dressed me and my sister, you know what I mean? Like she would have our outfits ready for us. And like I would literally get on the school bus and would be like tweaking my outfit and like changing things around, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, But I don't, I wasn't like crazy into it where like, because obviously like we couldn't really like afford things like that like who was grateful with what we had you know what i mean so we made it work and also i went to a school where it was like predominantly Somali people so Mm -hmm. like we all dressed the same so it wasn't like a thing like that i think it became a thing for me like in high school when i started when i was exposed to like different things Mm -hmm. and people wearing different things and that's kind of when i established like my own sense of style but i think i really really got into fashion like as i got older like in the last like six years i think just learning how to like I made a commitment to just like not show my hair anymore and like mm. to practice being more modest. Um, so for me, there was like this wave on Instagram. Honestly, I should give the credit to Instagram, but yeah. it was like modest fashion became a thing. Like you, you would see girls who are dressed up and you're wearing the kicks with the jeans and everything, but you're covered, you know, and it was like normal and it was like cool to do, you mm. know? Um, so I started doing that. And that's kind of like how my Instagram started growing as well. It's like, I just started putting like modest fits together. But for me, I never had the intention of like marketing this as modest fashion. It yeah. was like, I was going through my own like self-development phase in my life where I was figuring myself out and I was just kind of like posting it and then it started grabbing people's attention. Yeah, what's that? uh, What's the TikTok sound? Um, What's it? The the Muslim girls, they'll slay and not show skin (laughs) or something like that. Yeah, that's that's definitely the truth. Well, I... um, Mashallah, that's good. I I like the commitment to to modesty and and the hijab. Do you, um, especially in in the industry that you're in right now, What's that been like? Just having that, keeping that commitment to the hijab. I know that's really important. And I know a lot of models are now making that decision to like, you know, stand by that and be like, you know what? I'm not going to take my hijab off for nothing. So what's that been like? Well, first of all, it's definitely a blessing that we even like have that choice and that Mm -hmm. option to do Mm -hmm. that. You know, Um, I always go back to say like, I'm grateful that I got into this career at this stage in my life. Um, Like, had I wished that it was sooner, like, yeah, that would have been great. But, like, I know who I am Mm -hmm. and I know what I'm willing to, like, accept. And I'm just so much more, like, confident in who I am and, like, what I want to put out there into the world. I feel like if I was younger and I wanted to get into modeling, I would have settled because this would have never been a thing to have hijab-wearing models. You know what I mean? Like, back in the day, it's like, 
you got to be in your two piece bikini. And yep. I remember being younger, trying to like watching America's Next Top Model, getting I was gonna, influenced. I was going to say that. I was going to yeah. ask if you watched that show. I watched yeah. every single season, you know, um, like commit it, you know. And I would watch it and I was like, okay, I really want to do this. And like, wallahi, there was times that I would go back and forth between like, how am I going to ever get comfortable wearing a bikini? Mm-hmm. Like I have to, like, that's the only way I'm going to have to do it. And I would go back and forth like, how are you going to do this? Yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, possible? how is that impossible? So to be able to like do this now where I'm at this point in my life where I know myself, um, I have standards for myself, I have my morals that I'm standing by. Um, it's a blessing. It's really a beautiful thing. And to have like other, there's so <coughs> many hijab wearing models. Like there's mm-hmm. not a lot, a lot, but like there's a few of us. Yeah. And um, it's really a beautiful thing to see. Cause for me on one hand, it's like, I'm doing what I love. But on the other hand, it's like, yo, I'm really like inspiring younger girls and not just to like be a model, but like you could do whatever you want. You can make a seat for yourself at any table and you don't have to like put your morals or like your dean behind, like bring that with you. Have you ever had to say no? And have you like lost an opportunity because you said no? Um, I've never had to say no, but and thankfully it's like for like now that I'm signed, I have management. So my management, I made sure they understood like what I'm willing to do, what I'm willing to not do. So they do a phenomenal job at making sure. I've definitely been on set before where (laughs) like they didn't understand the assignment, you know, and I had to let them know like, you know, I can't wear that, right? (laughs) Um, And they figured it out. But um, I think I've said no to opportunities when it comes to like brand sponsorships on Instagram because it just doesn't align with my brand or who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, But as far as modeling, like my management does a great job in making sure I'm comfortable when I'm on set and they are the client already understands what I can do and what I can't do. I don't know. This is probably like a random ass question, (laughs) but that's what I'm here a lot. Yeah. Every time, like the idea of like whenever I think of a model, it's just a lot of shows where it's just people are like restricted to eat stuff like this, like a strict diet. You can't eat shit beliefs, mm-hmm. right? Is that true? And like, do you have to like sustain a strict diet or you just? Um, what I will say is the industry has definitely changed a lot. Yeah. Um, in some ways it is still the same though, but it's changed a lot. So like now you see a lot more like inclusivity as a trend, you know, mm-hmm. but you really do see like bigger models, shorter models. Like, so it's not really like a thing like that. But it is to some degree, like, you got to stay lean. Like, you got to just take care of yourself. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, make sure you're in the gym. Make sure you're good. Um, because there are certain, like, opportunities where, like, you won't get if you don't fit that those measurements. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I will definitely say that the industry has changed. And it's definitely more inclusive now. Do you have, like, this is me just being very curious. Do you mm-hmm. have, like, a gym regimen? Like, you go specific times during the week? Because he, he does track. Mm-hmm. And he was, like, in college. And, like... The idea that he said, yo, every morning I run. That's crazy. That's welly. That's beautiful, though. I wish I had that kind of discipline. <laughs> but, yeah. like, the idea to just wake up in the morning and just be like, yo, I'm going brush my teeth. I might drink a little bit of water. And then, and run. I'm gonna and go then run. run. That's just, nigga, I got to roll around, scroll through Instagram. <laughs> no, I do that, too. Now, hold on now. No, but that's discipline. Like, yeah. that's a beautiful thing. Well, like, having a routine in life is so important. Oh, like, very much is. I feel like that's also kind of, like, what helped me when I went on this like self development like becoming the person that I am today like took a lot of work mm-hmm. and like having a routine is very important like I got a gym membership but I don't use it like I need to you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean yeah. I'm gonna just be honest but like <laughs> alhamdulillah like my genetics is like what creates this I don't watch what I eat I'm it's not that, like a hey I gotta eat this that's that Somali in me thank you so much it's for that Somali honesty, in me. Yeah. well hey I eat whatever I want I do whatever I want like mm-hmm. I try to go to the gym every now and then man you know? yeah. I love that. Like you, what I like you were saying. I love that honesty, bro. Because yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. A lot of models that come on this show and they be like, "Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't eat carbs. I don't do this. I don't do that. Mm. Uh, I hit the gym uh, 12 times a week." Um, well, <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta be honest. I wish I had that kind of discipline, yeah. but I don't. <laughs> yeah. That discipline is important, though. I feel like a lot of people, like you were saying, while well, I look at me and they say, "Yeah, nigga, you run every morning. Like, what's That's wrong beautiful. with you? You crazy." But we like, have to take care of our bodies. Yeah, well, like you do. You really have to take care of your do body. Do you feel off when you don't run? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or when I don't do, like, any sort of physical activity. And it's all about, like, just, like, your journey and your life and your own self-development, right? Because yeah. for me, physical activity was a way to kind of cope with things and to deal with things. So even when I'm not dealing with stuff, if I don't do any sort of physical activity the whole day, I feel off. Like, I feel like, damn, like, I don't feel like how I'm supposed to feel, you know? So... Well, like she's right. Just having a routine kind of helps you feel how you want to feel. But not, the thing with Chudo, the thing that I respect the most is you've never posted. 
you running at early nah, in the morning? Cause I'm ugly when I run. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm very invested. But in not this. like you could have did the whole little. You know what I'm saying? The five a.m. and nah, then the I don't little do that the book. TikToks and I stuff. Don't but like do that he doesn't. Shit. Nah. Um. Yeah, I'm very invested into this pretty nigga thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm trying to. Period. We I'm love that. To, we got, we got I need men models. to take care of themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I hate the fact that guys think that taking care of themselves is like being mm, feminine. No. Like, where's the ties? Like, taking take care, care of yourself. A hundred percent. Take care of yourself is a big part of your well, faith. Right. It is. As a Muslim 100%. man, one hundred percent. You gotta look good, brother. Mm-hmm. All right. So you gotta take care of yourself. And what you said. What I said. Yes, I have modeled, but like, don't put us in the same category because she's. Oh, he heard that thing. She's no, like, first of all, she's like, look, she like up here, mm-hmm. and I'm like right here. Don't you know stop. what I'm saying? But the thing is, is you've, you've done some work. I though. have, and like, I was thinking about um what you said earlier about like the timing of things. So I I started modeling when I was like 15, 16, very young, mm-hmm. um, and like I, I acted before and I did a lot of theater, and through that, I folks was like, all the all three theater kids here mm-hmm. just having a just having a conversation. Um, <laughs> Um, we we very corny to us theater people, but it's okay. Um, I love it. Yeah. So, but through those opportunities, folks was like, like you said, like yo, you should go and model and you should try it out. But I I felt what you said because I was so young and so vulnerable. I said yes to a lot of stuff, and mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do this and I'll do that. Because you're just you're thinking about this fleeting moments and you're thinking about well, I'm not secure in myself right now. So like I'm gonna find my security and success through this thing right here. You know. Um, alhamdulillah like I never compromised my faith though cause like I know what you mean I think it's way harder as a woman to do it yeah, as a 100%. man you wallahi billah she knows this too men don't do jack shit when we as a models when we shoot we don't do shit I come they I don't. sit down they do light makeup minimal makeup when I say makeup they call it makeup vaserina into the imbaria eyebrows go they move my head brush around like up. that brush up the hair oil and they moisturize the fuck out of you <laughs> The shit is a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> she knows too. You are taken care of. You got you don't like, anything. There's a point where I'm sitting like this. And so two people just blow lotion in my hands. Um, but like she's but well, like we don't do nothing. I would sit there, they would go change, do hair, come back, go back in the room, change, do another makeup set, do another hair set. I don't need I'm I'm on my phone playing uh subway surfer, nigga. Muhammad, we need you. I go I love it. And then just go sit Bro, back how down. How is it though? The like, well, like the idea that like, yo, I'm here to like get photos of me taken for a specific product or just, you know what I mean? Like that. Like, I, how is that? Like, how do y'all like? To me, like me, you can answer that. It, please answer it because it's yeah. just it's such an interesting thing. Yeah, I don't know. Like to me, every time I'm on set, like, well, I have not gonna lie to you guys. You would think that at this point I would get used to because I've been doing this professionally now for almost two years. Mm-hmm. But I'm literally pinching myself because I'm yeah. shocked. Like, I'm like, how is little old me doing this? Yeah. <laughs> like, how am I here? Like, sometimes we're rocking brands that are in my closet, shooting for skincare brands that are in my bathroom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy. It's a surreal feeling. So for me, it's that part of it of being surreal. And then it's also like, yo, like, it's about to be my face on this. Like, that's going to literally inspire so many people. Because growing up, we didn't see that. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? And that's why I, going back to why I thought it was never tangible for me to actually, like, make a career out of this. Because it was like, girl, ain't nobody looking like you on these ads or mm-hmm. campaigns. Like, yeah. you are, you're reaching, you know? So, um, <laughs> it, well, I, it's, it's a very surreal moment. Um, and, I, again, like, I love what I do. So, to me, it doesn't feel like work. It's fun. Yeah. Can, someone, can someone make a full-time career out of it? Oh, 100%. And how, like, how can they go about doing it? Like, how can someone like, let's just say, someone like you said, that everyone you compliments you ready? them. It's time to get practical. Let's oh, get practical. We're doing a, go ahead. <laughs> so you so on, on this show, we have a segment. We have a segment called "Let's Get Practical." It. She was here for for the for the other. Oh, did you see that one? I did. Yeah. <laughs> I a, saw the whole debate too. Of whether this has been a thing or not. Yeah. You saw me do my thing, I right? Love it. Yeah. It's definitely a thing. Yeah. It's a thing now. Okay, go it ahead. It is a thing now. Um, I'm forcing it to be a thing. Come on. Um, but we have a segment on this show called Let's Get Practical where we hope that viewers can watch that part of it and leave with something that can help them attain whatever that they want to attain in life and chase their dreams or develop themselves in any sort of way. So like Hamza was saying, first of all, is it a job where you can make a living off of it, right? And I And just kind of our shared experience touch on the, the aspect that you don't have to be America's next top model to make money off of mm-hmm. modeling, right? And for the folks, the young ladies and the young men that are watching this that are like, 
I think I'm good looking. I can do this modeling thing. What are some steps that they can take to 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 at least pursue that dream? Yeah, um, I think modeling is 100% a career that you can make full time. Um, I think some of the things that I would share as tips is going into this. That I've learned in my journey is going into this. Like I thought like, OK, cool. Boom. I get signed. Boom. I'm going to take over the world. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? And don't get me wrong. I'm doing great things like not to toot my own horn. But yeah. I know I'm that girl. Yeah. But um, it. It, there's a, it's a roller coaster you know what i mean like there's times where like for months it's doing great and then for months you're not doing anything but the thing is you get paid very well mm -hmm. so when you do get paid the first piece of advice that i would give anybody is like just to be very smart with your money and don't like go off and just splurge you know what yeah. i mean like invest your money save your money be really smart with it because it is a very up and down industry like it's it's unless you are you know, the, that 5% of like top models, you yeah. know what I mean? You're not going to consistently be booked. Like that's a beautiful thing to be consistently booked. But sometimes like, you know, you'll go a month without being booked and then the next month you're getting booked. So just be very smart with your money and be prepared that like it is a roller coaster ride and you're going to go through those times where like, wow, am I not good enough? Why am I not getting booked? What's happening? You go through those phases, you know, where you're like questioning yourself, but just like know your worth, know what you're capable of doing and just make sure you have a good support team that reminds you of how great you are all the time and make sure you remind yourself how great you are all the time. Mm, um, and the second thing I would say is if you are just trying to get your foot into the career, I get access all the time and I genuinely don't know, like I don't have like a, a set answer yeah. to say like, this is how you do it because my way of doing it was very unconventional and yeah. like just kind of, I don't want to say it was luck because I definitely worked my butt off to get to where I am. Um, but I was like, just to like speak on my experience, I literally was like putting myself out there for like two, three years. Like mm. I was posting on Instagram every single day, <clears throat> definitely building my platform helped me. I'm not saying you have to have a platform to yeah. help you, but in my case, it helped me. North Dakota. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not you remembering that. Wait, wait, oh my that? God. Hey, that? Watch the Sincerely Honest podcast. Yeah. Talk go, about North Dakota. Yeah. Go, go figure out how North Dakota helped me. <laughs> Go figure that Damn, out. Damn, now I gotta watch it too. Yeah, I, go listen. All right, all right. Go ahead. Um, what was I saying? That was funny that you remember. I, that. I was like, I thought about it. I was like, Instagram, oh, it's North Dakota. Yeah. So, so you were talking about just building your own brand. Yeah. So I started building my brand, and um, with that, I started like you know gaining traction and audience, people that supported me, pushed me every single day. And what I would do is, I would post photos, and you in the modeling industry, they don't want you all caked up, full glam. Like they don't want that. They want the most natural. Like yeah. a lot of the times when I'm on set shooting, like I barely wear makeup unless it's like high fashion editorial stuff that I'm doing. They want to see your bare face. They want to mm -hmm. see you with no makeup. They want to see just you with like bare skin, nothing too crazy, um, minimal, very simple. So I just would post photos and tag every single agency I wanted to work with. Yeah. <laughs> and like you could probably scroll down my Instagram right now and go see that. But I would literally tag them all like crazy. Boom, 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 tag them. And then I would also send emails to agencies that I wanted to work with. But like just make sure you do the research and look into the people that you're sending your photos to mm -hmm. and make sure that it's a, a team. I mean, of course you won't be able to know who everybody is just from like looking, but like just see who they work with, see who the talent they have signed, go on their website, see the kind of people that they have signed to their agency, the kind of people that they work with um, just to kind of get a gist to see if it's a good fit for you and if it matches you. But yeah, again, I don't have like an exact way yeah. to say like, yeah. Hey, this is how you do it, but just mm -hmm. be persistent, put yourself out there, practice in front of the mirror, know how to pose, be natural and be like, know who you are. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing I can say is don't go into this unless you've done the self work to know who you are. Make sure you're 1000% confident in who you are and just are very comfortable with yourself. I have a question for both of y'all. Are there any Somali agencies? I know you, your agency is probably really dope. Mm -hmm. Respect and shout out to your agency. But are there any like Somali modeling agencies? No. Not that I know of. Not that I know of, no. Wow. I never thought of that. Yeah. That'd be dope if we had one. I know. I've thought about that. Um, yeah. But yeah, there isn't any. But it's just like so much work that goes into yeah that's just no joke you know what i mean and like it's like experience is contracts also needed. Like, networking probably yeah you, know. you gotta know a lot and of to start an agency you gotta you gotta have the connections you with, have to yeah. yeah you gotta like you gotta find your your folks work so like let's say like i'm like oh i'm gonna start an agency you know mm. the best i can do is like best buy and target only because they're like local businesses mm -hmm. and i have connections with them in general but like slight flex not, not really. <laughs> 
I can't get you like in the fashion. Yeah, I just know. In the fashion Our industry, though. Lot. I mean, we got Miss Nike over there, so I'm not going to say too much. Uh, We're going to get into that, though. But I'm saying, like, in the, we, I can't get you the Gucci, the Prada, yeah. the no, New York he's Fashion right, Week. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. if you I started it in. today, yeah. So most people who start. Um, like when I was when I was um, fifteen, I was signed to Privileged um, over in Egan, or Dino, one of the two. And the guy who started it was like a he was a musician at first, but he was a model for like 15, 20 years. Yep. So he he gained all these connections from different yeah. casting directors and different uh, um, brands and whatever it may be. So then now he has like hundreds of people under his agency, and he can just go like, okay, boom, you fit here, you fit there. That's that's really what it is, but. Shawla in like 10, 15 years, yeah. I know for a fact she can do it because she she has a work ethic, you know what I'm saying? She's doing her thing right now. So in 10, 15 years, you you might have the connections to be Absolutely. like, let's start a Hawaii agency. How and is networking when you're up there? Like when you're speaking with these type, like big brands and stuff, are people like friendly? Like, and you, I guess people are all different, but mm-hmm. are people um, more I've so likely a, to be friendly? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've had the best experiences. I can't say I've had a bad experience on set. Right. Um, but a lot of the times when we're on set, you're in, it's very rare that you're like actually like like the designer is actually there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, there's been a few instances where I've met like when I shot with Good American, like Khloe Kardashian was on set with us. So like that was crazy because I'm like, wow, girl, you just on set with us. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was cool. But most of the times like I'm working with like the team, like, you know, the production team, the stylist and They've been absolutely wonderful. And th- those are great people to like tap in with too, yeah. because knowing those people, like they can recommend you for their next job or like yeah. what they're working with. So it's just really good to like leave an impression on people and just be kind and nice and talk to people. Yeah. No, it's, well, I, like, both acting and modeling, they'll teach you. And even like podcasting as well is like your character goes a long way. Bro. Absolutely. It goes a long way. So when you're sitting there and somebody's doing your hair or somebody's, you know, moisturizing or like these people that are doing the small jobs, you're sitting there like this like be <laughs> really be kind to people bro well, like, and be like good. be a good individual that goes leaps and bounds beyond like all this other stuff because then people are going to remember that mm-hmm. you know and people are going to be like oh, i bet like i'll do this I'll do. how many people have come on our show just off of you know what i'm saying just off of our good how character you treated them. Yeah. and how we treated how we had a conversation there's a lot of people where we had a conversation we never talked about the podcast like we it, it didn't start with like yo come on our podcast like we we just like yo what do you do because me and how just have a general curiosity of like what do people do why do they do what they do what makes people tick and just wanting to learn about people and just having that good character that good akhlaq bro goes a long yeah. way because People really fuck with you if you have that. Wallahi, mashallah. No, I agree. I tell people that all the time. Being a good person matters. Like, do good things and wallahi, good things will happen to you. I feel like that's a lot of, like, I mean, of course, it's all God and mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But um, being a good person matters. I feel like doing good things, like, good things will come to you. Well, how is a career? I'm trying to phrase this. Mm-hmm. Very non-controversial way. Well, it's not even that. Take your time. Don't- how is it having a, this is for both of y'all, I'm be honest with y'all. How is it having a career that's in the limelight that everything you do, someone will see mm. and like have any comments gotten to you? Mm. I'm, I'm not going to answer that question because I'm really not in the limelight, but she can go ahead and, and talk about that. Uh, it says yeah. the published author. Hey? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're to be humble over there, this but is okay. not the, This is not the Muhammad show. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. is, this um, no, this is ghost talk. You talk too. All right, but I got you. I'll right answer. After, right I'll after answer, the goat. Yeah, I got you. I'll answer after her. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be honest. It's a lot. Well, I hate like I tell people like you. And again, this goes back to like me and the stage in my life that I'm at of knowing who I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? And making sure that I'm a thousand percent sure of myself and confident in myself. Because had I not been, it probably would have like n- not been like how it is for me right now. But it's a lot to have your life on the limelight all the time, especially when like me, I'm not gonna like growing up, I had a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. I was always like, you know, around I'm a very social person. And over the years, my personality has really like shifted to like, low key this introvert. Because yeah. <laughs> like, it's a lot like you have eyes on you all the time. Um, but I don't know. You just gotta not know how to like not let things get to you and really have tough skin. But again, like we're human, you know what mm-hmm. I mean. So I'm not gonna sit here in front like, oh yo, I don't care. Yeah. But what was the of, wildest comment you had? I can't remember off that, okay, but I'm not gonna let you. I be blocking people. What? Yeah. Bro, how long is your blog list? Well, I has long. That's, I, I like that. I love Wallahi. that. Wallahi. Like I mean, I'm block, delete. Like I yeah. pay no oh, mind. Oh, for to real? It. Yeah. So do you like go into your like someone sends you a wild comment? You just want. 
delete block delete block can i ask oh, you that's crazy. can i ask you something and i know you'd be dealing with this <laughs> the fobs in your dms oh my god <laughs> do they shoot yo they be wilding <laughs> you see i mean yo, they be wilding <laughs> hey you got the question and look this is what they be doing this is what they be doing they be in the dms with the voice note with the voice note like, like this <sighs> السلام عليكم ابو باي وشالله هذا وقرح بلطة هاي واحد شو قاعد حمر مقدشة نمبر كان قاعد يسوي بعزي كتير والله ما شاء الله. That's how they be. They be in there just deep voice, close as fuck to the phone. And they be all ready to get married. Like they all talking about getting married. Like do you know me from a can of paint? Yeah. Are you talking about you trying to? From a can of paint. والله um yeah but I'm not gonna lie to you like I barely look at my messages on that sense like if I see like I could kind of tell from the beginning of the message like I won't respond I like responding to like young girls or yeah. like guys that message me like I'll respond back I'm not like you know yeah, Hollywood but yeah I ain't Hollywood yeah, yeah. but like um when it comes to comments though I will definitely delete and block you like there's also this feature where you can like block off certain words because I'm not gonna lie to you a lot of the times wallahi 98% of the time I get love yeah. like people are so nice and supportive like the community that I've built online is it's actually quite insane. Like the way they support me is like wild. Cause it's like people that know you in real life won't support you like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so 90% of the, like 98% of the time is good. That 2% most of the time is people kind of like talking to me about like how I'm dressed and what yeah. I'm wearing. Yeah. Um, it's really more so that like, they're like, Oh, you're not wearing the hijab properly. You're not doing this properly. Listen, I didn't say I was a saint. I didn't say I was yeah. perfect. You know I, what I mean? I didn't say I was doing anything. This nigga, this is just I a picture. I didn't even say, be like you know do what i'm doing like yeah. i'm just like doing i'm living my life yeah. but um even in those cases like if they're real disrespectful like i will definitely like swipe delete block have you ever responded to somebody i don't but you know i have a community like i have a tribe that oh. like you know they oh. will be in those comments, comments responding. i'm not gonna lie though they're like holden holden has like a little community yeah. too yeah they support they love show it. love that's love and it's especially my sister like my sister who's like you're right younger than me yeah. like she don't play she will be in those comments responding to everybody cussing them i'm like in hand chill she's like nah <laughs> they can't be talking to you like this i'm like okay you right that's good well i mashallah yeah so i mean i mean personally well like, it really doesn't phase me i don't really like pay it no mind like if i think it's real wild though i will swipe delete and block you because we don't want negative energies yeah positive vibes over Allah, here you're 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 a better woman than me i'd be swiping i'd be, I'd be commenting i'd be talking shit yep. i'd be talking yeah. crazy under the comments goddamn Oh yeah, negativity yeah. in your bullshit. Cause we don't do that shit over here. I love that. I love that. No, vibe. people be bold though on the internet, you guys. Like, oh yeah, bold. Oh yeah, and it's a lot of projecting too. It is one hundred percent, and that's how you have to look at it. Yeah, though. It's that's like, literally what it is. It's not me. It's it's a you problem. Yeah. It's a lot of like I don't know how to dress, so I'm gonna talk shit about her. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't know how to express myself. So yeah, I'm, gonna I'm insecure in myself, yeah. so. I'm gonna talk shit about her, but like what they also don't understand is like you're a human being as well. You 100%. deal with a lot of the shit probably they they dealing with. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And again, that's when I go back to saying like I never said I was a saint. I'm yeah. not perfect. Like I'm very much a practicing Muslim, but like I'm trying to be better day by day. Of course, yeah. I'm gonna make mistakes just like you do. You know what I mean? But that's why I say you really have to be sure of who you are before you go into the scene of like modeling or being mm. a influencer or wanting to put your life out there to people to judge because that's ultimately what we're doing like we're i can't be mad at it because yeah. this is what i decided to do 100 percent. this is this is a a life choice that you made and it's, it's yeah. done wonders for you Allah, mashallah. um yeah. was what was it like the first time seeing yourself like in a store or that the first time that you walked in and you saw that yourself on a poster or or on a brand or what was that experience like yeah um well, I think the first time ever for me was like, it was online. Um, I think it was, it was for a beauty brand. And I think I, someone sent it to me actually, it was on the Sephora website. Yeah. And I was like, wow, well, that's crazy. Yeah. Like that's a little old me, you know? Yeah. Um, but the first time I was ever in a store store was like a shoot that I did like last summer for Walmart. And like someone sent it to me, like it was like the whole billboard like in Walmart. And I'm like, mom like i went straight to my mom i was like oh yeah like, look at this yeah. i'm in walmart like we shop there <laughs> <laughs> well, we are. you know what i mean i'm like that's crazy and i showed her she was like wow you i know, know your mom's like hey what you see that? <laughs> yeah <laughs> you already know yeah. but like um yeah it, it's just surreal and to me like well I, every time i'm shocked like recently i did something for nike and like mm. when i go and i see my face on the the app i'm like yeah Bro, like, how, how flex. was that though like not even slight flex slight flex but how was it when they came to you and we're like, yo, they went through your the agency. Yeah, though, they went right? through my agent. So the agency came and said, yo, we got a little something for you. Like, yeah. How was it the moment you you heard about it? Um, 
Well, the first time, because like, okay, this is like. <laughs> oh, so several times. She yeah, works with Nike. Like, well, but your best buy her Nike, same thing. Not to toot my own horn, you know, but it's, it's, it's actually a great thing, though, when a, um, a client wants to continue working yeah, with you. Yeah. So it's like, it's amazing. And then let alone, it's Nike, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I'm like, wow. Y'all, y'all want to work? Y'all, y'all like little old me? Yeah. Um, but the first time, I think I was just in shock because it was like right after I got signed. It was a few months after I got signed, and in the beginning, it was like kind of slow. Like not a lot was happening. Mm-hmm. And again, going back to me thinking like, oh, I'm about to take over the world after yeah. I got signed, you know? So the first time, my agent messaged me. He's like, hey. Like, he wants to shoot with you. No, he's told me I was on hold. So being on hold is like, they want you, but like, you're not confirmed yet. Yeah. So I was pacing back and forth. Like, oh my gosh. Checking, should your, I? checking your email. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> should I? No, but I'm going back and forth. Like, should I tell people? Because I'm very big on oh, like, not speaking okay. on things until yeah. like, I don't share things. Like, even yeah. like the work that I do, even though a lot of times I can't because I sign NDAs, but I'm not big on like, telling everybody like, oh, hey, this is about to happen. This is about to happen. Like, I like to just let things happen. So I'm going back and forth like, oh my gosh, should I tell everybody? I'm like, okay, no, if I just be quiet. And then I book it and I tell everyone and I fly to LA and it was just honestly the most surreal experience ever. But when that shoot happened, that was my first time shooting with them. I never saw the photos. So that's a big thing with like modeling. It's like they're they're not entitled to send you the photos of what you do. If you see it out there, you see it out there. That's how it is, you Mm -hmm. know? So I never saw it. But the second time I worked with them, I ended up seeing the stuff like on their app and I was like, of course, I was searching every single day, like, yeah, <laughs> you know, where is that? But it's like, it takes months sometimes. So, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, even now, I just recently shot some um, modest, like, swimwear stuff with them that just came out. And they posted that stuff in, like, a week. I was shocked. I was like, oh, my God, that's me. And this is all on the website, right? Yeah, it's on their website, on their app. Um, yeah. And this this wow. is related to modeling, but more so fashion. Yeah, like, you, you're currently the model. Do you see how a brand grows and how they market their stuff? from being a model like from that perspective or is it just you guys are just blanking it off and she's like yo go do your job we all handle the rest yeah no i don't see it from the modeling perspective a little bit more on like the uh content creation part like on instagram like working with brands um Mm -hmm. just seeing like the power of influencers and the power of social media when it comes to businesses like it's crazy (laughs) you know what i mean um so on the modeling side not so much uh, but definitely like working with brands like because I don't feel like I'm working with a brand directly when I'm modeling. Like I don't know how to explain it. It's like mm-hmm. I'm working with their team, Yeah. even though I guess in influencing, too. But it's like you kind of have more control, I guess, like because they send you product and you do what you want yeah. with their product to like advertise it. They might mm-hmm. give you like restrictions and like guidelines of what you want them to do. Yeah. But it's crazy when a product goes viral. And you're like, dang, like we. Like we did that yeah, or like, you know, influence that, yeah. did that. It was kind of crazy. Yeah. Cause like with modeling, you're essentially like a vessel to, yeah. to show the world. You're essentially like a vessel to show the world this product. Right. So like with Nike, you're really a part of their marketing campaign. Yeah. Like you yourself as an individual, as a, as a human being is a part of their, their marketing campaign. So that's kind of like how you would flow into, into that. Um, Back to, back to the Nike campaign. Cause is Hamza his his already recording? We're recording again. No, what were we talking about? We're just talking about where would you want to live? Oh. Yeah, um, I want to live overseas. I want to live in like Paris. No, Paris is not it. Have you ever been to Paris? No, I've never been. But I, eh, I don't feel you, great oh, about that. Zero area. out of ten. Zero out of ten. They don't zero like us. No, it's just terrible. It's just, there's nothing to do there. Yeah, Ain't but they're really to racist too. They're really racist. The it's just yo, this is like personal. Yeah, I've been to Paris <laughs> once for like eight hours, and then we went again when we were coming back from Spain. I did hear it's um overhyped. Huh? No, oh, you were no, was it? There was two groups. Was two groups. Yeah. <laughs> so when we were coming back, first of all, when I first went is when I was first going to Africa. I was going to Africa. I was lay. I was layover. You know, when you get that layover mm-hmm. in either like Paris or Amsterdam. I was layover in Paris. I'm like, I'm about to go see Paris, my nigga. I'm about Eiffel to. Tower. Eiffel Tower, niggas. <laughs> You know why the song is called Niggas, niggas in, in Paris? Paris Cuz niggas, niggas was in Paris. Paris, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> niggas was not in Paris. <sighs> Ain't no niggas in Paris, I'll tell you that. There is straight white folks in Paris. And, and they don't rock with the niggas nah. either. They're very and they even. don't rock with Muslims either. No, they do not. So they see that name, Muhammad Salah, and they're like, "Hey, oh no. This nigga, <laughs> you when ain't we coming were, in. When we were hey, coming oh back, no. back it up, back it up. You got to respect. You know, they asked me, you know, bullshit. He asked me, huh. he said, he's like, what's your name? And I told him my name, as he can clearly see on my passport. And then bro goes, how, how? 
uh, how, how did you pay for this uh, for this ticket to on this flight? The disrespect. And and I was like, uh, with my money, <laughs> you did not say that. I said yeah because I was confused. I didn't say it out of spite to like be disrespectful. I was like, but you're being bad. Like, yeah, that, that was like uh, I, bought, I bought the ticket. Nigga, I was not. Do you think I'm gonna be disrespectful in the airport? <laughs> they will lock my ass up for real. I was I'm scared. Glad nigga, coming back I from was Paris. stuttering. Nigga, I was like, with my airport, must see, uh, <laughs> sir, right? And, and then he's like, oh, do you have a job? And I was like, yeah, like in. in he, they were just going down the list. Do you have a job? What, were you, what are you doing in France? I was like, I just want to see France. Like, I, I just want to see the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, I just want to see the Eiffel Tower. See Eiffel Tower. <laughs> like, that's it, you know? But like, they just, just don't go there. Don't waste your yeah, time. Have you ever gotten caught up with a TSA? Oh you my God. God. You've never? No. Are you I work at the airport too, but I oh don't, I've never, TSA has never messed with me, thankfully. Oh. Stories now? It made me take off my socks once. Ain't that some shit? Nigga, so you, my socks <laughs> and my shoes in oh, the in front of the terminal. That's crazy. Go ahead. So like recently, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but like there was like a big fashion trend of like um, baklavas. So it's yeah. like hooded. So With the COVID tell, and stuff too, yeah. Yeah, so let me tell you guys. One day I'm traveling and it's kind of like a hijab, but it's not a hijab, but it it covers your hair. You know what I mean? It's like a hood. Like, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah I know that. Yep. So I'm flying and I remember I was going to LA and I'm at the airport and the lady's like, oh, um, you got to take your hood off. And I'm like, ma'am, this is not no a hood. And I'm like, this ain't a hood, girl. Like, this is my, <laughs> and it's like two of them, okay? And the other lady like runs up like, yeah, you got, I'm like, can you back up? She like, tried to take your hijab off. She's trying to take it off. Like what? she's thinking, like it's a hood though. Oh. Like, and I'm like, no. And this other guy comes. He literally, like, I watched him come from like two lanes, and he's like, like, don't do that. Like, it's her. She's covering her hair. And I'm Look, like, you know, you fumbled the bag. I'm if like, I was you, I'm glad you knew that. If I was you, I would have let her take my hijab. And I'm Lucas I, I, I kind of gave them the benefit of the doubt yeah. though, because well, I, I genuinely thought like maybe they didn't know, you know, oh, yeah. like maybe she just really truly didn't know and i think she didn't because like afterwards she was in shock but i'm like why are you getting in people's personal space and stuff? Color, right? you know why I mean? did she care about the hood though like she, you know i don't know because i guess you can't like wear your hood when you're going oh, through yeah, the x-ray right, though yeah when you're going through the x-ray so it was like right before the x-ray and she's like i'm like girl back, up. <laughs> <laughs> back it up back it up and she was like don't touch me keep your hands, keep your hands to yourself yeah but like alhamdulillah that. i've never had any crazy experiences a lot a lot of crazy experience i think it's just because my name is Mohammed, and you're a black man i've being a black man in this is hard yeah i mean being a muslim woman is even harder no 100 a lot harder a lot harder because y'all wear it yeah niggas don't know my name like i'm muslim till i tell them like oh my name is Mohammed. then they're like oh yeah you one of them you're one of them muslims that's what you (laughs) is but before that, I just look like a regular dude, like just walking around. Obviously, the, the color of my skin is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is I it, think we both have it. Yeah. We both have it kind of rough. Yeah. Do you ever reflect? Like, just on a sense, it's just like, damn, you from St. Paul, raised, yep, yep. went to Central. Yeah. Dude over there is smiling. <laughs> this man going to say I'm from Southside. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, I might know. Okay, hey, my fault. It's Central, right? But, like, the idea of, like, yo, you were f- from Central to just being in ads and like being not just ads but like the face of the nike hijab like let's really be honest and like mm. would you remember how you're talking about influencers really do influence yeah like honestly you're at that point where people just look don't look at you as just a model like yo what is it for the hop to mm-hmm. you know what i mean so how how is it do you ever just look back and like damn oh all the time i'm like a big like reflective person like i journal like i like to like remember things and um yeah, I reflect all the time. I'm, I'd be shocked. I'd be like, wow, this is crazy, you yeah. know? Like, I'm here. But alhamdulillah, like, I, I literally always, I practice gratitude a lot. And I I give all the praise to Ilahi because mm-hmm. I literally would not, like, any none of us would be here. But, like, my life would not be what it is because I, like, it could have taken so many different paths. You know what I mean? And a lot of people don't know that. But, like, mm-hmm. you know, people see you and they just think, like, oh, you got lucky. Or, like, yeah. you know, you. but it's like, no. Like, I definitely worked my butt <laughs> off to get here. <laughs> And also, like, you don't even know, like, how many different paths my life could have taken. So mm-hmm. I'm definitely very reflective and very, very grateful. Like, yeah. speaking on all the, like, you just said, like, I put in the work, right? Mm-hmm. That's what I was about how, to ask right now, too. Yep. I was going to ask imposter syndrome. Yeah. Were you going to ask imposter syndrome, too? My nigga, I'm not shit. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I do get, yeah, I get that shit all the time. All, all right. the time. Yeah. All the time. I think I, like, recently made a TikTok talking about that. But, like, imposter syndrome is a real 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really is. Like in it, like you know how early we were, I think you guys were talking about I was like sitting down, but you guys were talking about how like competition is like the thief of joy. Yeah. I think for me it's imposter syndrome because mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, like not trying to say like, oh hey, but like I really don't see competition in other people. Like I'm more like focused on myself. You yeah. know what I mean? And I think I'm my biggest critic and sometimes can also be my biggest enemy, but yeah. like I'm also my biggest cheerleader, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, imposter syndrome kicks in all the time and especially with the career that I have and yeah. what I do, it some days I'm just like, no, you're not doing enough. But alhamdulillah, like I have a great support system and mm-hmm. great family and friends that always remind me, like, you're killing it. Like mm-hmm. you are that girl. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So Allah. I'm grateful for them for to always remind me that. But yeah, I definitely do be like in my feelings sometimes, like, you're just not doing enough. Mm-hmm. You could be doing more. Yeah. That's some shit what lie. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm about. That is some shit. That's like my daily life right there. Like, yeah. maybe, I know you I know you ran like four miles this morning and you're doing like 30 things today, but you could have done more, nigga. Yeah, that's me all the time. I yeah. wear so many different shoes, like, but I'm like, no, you could be doing more. Mm-hmm. But it's it's important to 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 keep that in check. And the, the kind of the segue that I have is like you you work in an industry where beauty standards are high, right? And there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on and you're literally putting yourself out there a lot. How do you, what What are things that you do to keep your mental health in check to just keep, sh- to make sure that, you know what, like, um, I'm good or where I am. And like you said before, which is really important, is like if you're going to get into this industry or you not know, honestly, any industry, like knowing yourself is important. 100%. So what are, what are some things that you do with that? Um, I think definitely like the number one thing for me is like the, my faith is like the center of my life. Yeah. So I know that whatever comes whatever goes like that is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's always for the best you know so that's really what keeps me sane and keeps me okay because especially with what I do like sometimes you're really gonna be like yo dang like this really didn't work out for me like mm-hmm. or like oh my gosh like I like but it wasn't meant for me yeah, so and it's like, okay coulda, coulda, woulda, you would, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. but like when you truly like believe and you have your faith and that's what leads you through life mm-hmm. like you're not going to be but hurt about that you're not going to be sitting here sad and depressed about oh this didn't work out or that didn't work out because you know like allah has better plans for you because we plan but allah is the best of planners so you know yeah. um so i think that's really what gets me through and just i don't know i just like to stay as productive and focused as possible and like I don't know, work hard. Don't get me wrong. I'm also really a lazy person sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm going to be really honest. Like, I feel like the most productive people are so, like, the most laziest people. But, yeah, I just like to keep myself busy. And, yeah. How how do you view Somali brands now that are up and coming? Mm. Mm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, I'm really, really big on, like, supporting people. Oh, yeah. And I think that's so important because, like, as Somali people, like, we be our own enemies. Mm-hmm. We be so, like everyone is so focused on the next person and what they're doing to get to where they are. But it's like, I know it's so cliche and we hear this all the time, but wallahi, there is room for all of us to eat and there's room for all of us to win. And if we really like focus on that, like we could all be doing such great things. You know what I mean? But I'm really big on supporting people. Like I love supporting local brands and people that have whatever it is. If it's a clothing brand, a beauty brand, whatever it is, like I'm really big on, like I know some people messaging me and I'm like, cool. Like, yeah, I, I have brands pay me and hopefully my agent don't hear this because they're really big on me getting paid. But like, mm-hmm. I'm okay with like, if you are a small brand, like yeah. I will, I will post your stuff. Like I will, I'm okay with that. Like, yeah. I don't mind it. Go ahead, DM me, send it to me, you know, because like we all started somewhere. I remember when I used to send my post to everybody, like post 100%. my shit, yeah. you know what I mean? 100%. To make my shit yeah. grow. So yeah. yeah. That's really important. Um, Something that I think about a lot as I'm the older brother to, to three younger sisters mashallah beautiful beautiful young ladies shout out to them i try to tell them every day that like because like you said earlier and i think about this a lot but like being a black muslim woman especially in america like it's hard for you to see yourself in a lot of these things it's hard Mm -hmm. for you to see yourself um in america's next top model even if you're watching the show and you're invested in it you don't see yourself out there in the world and i try to like tell them every day like you guys are beautiful mashallah you guys are this you guys are that and just kind of like hype them up as much as I can because I know the outside world not doing that, mm-hmm. right? Because of the way that we have beauty standards. And again, like the industry is changing, but and honestly, 10 years ago, it was it was skinny, white, blonde, blue eyes. That was Literally. that was the beauty and that was the that was the the standard at the time, but it's, it's changing now. Mm-hmm. With the Nike campaign, mashallah, with all these stuff that you're doing, how much do you think about that and just inspiring the youth and inspiring young ladies to like 
find beauty within themselves and, and see that within themselves and not really look out there with it yeah oh all the time for me it's two things one it's between me literally pinching myself like girl how are you here how yeah. are you doing this yeah and also me saying like oh my gosh there's so many people that get inspired by this and like i love my virtual friends and my virtual community because well like they keep me going and it, it's just like the most like humbling fulfilling feeling for someone to tell you like you inspire me like you like make allow me to be seen like you, it makes me so happy to see you doing this because i know i can do this or my kids can do this or my daughters can do this or like seeing you do this has made me get through a tough time in my life mm -hmm. and i'm just like yo that's crazy <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, like well like that's so crazy and it's really a beautiful feeling so for me like growing up i was before i like got into all this i was um like I was really good at school and like that's what I was telling you guys earlier like I, w I love high school I'll do it all over again yeah. but that was all I was good at was school like that was my talent I never like ventured off into other things and I, I think you guys kind of like we're, we're kind of similar in age but y'all like, know explore your creatives and like having these unconventional dreams like yeah. that was not a thing you know what I mean it was go to school become a doctor get engineer a job, lawyer yeah. get a job corporate America you know what I mean so that was the things that was my dreams at some point in life but for me now to have these unconventional dreams and to actually be living in them and to have people see that is very inspiring. And I like how you said, like, you're an older brother and you want to be an example for your siblings. That's my number one priority in my life. Like, I'm a big sister. I'm the oldest of nine. And I love my siblings to death. Like, that's my tribe. Those are my yeah. people, you know. And I want to be the best example I can be for them. And I want to, I always, my whole life, like, I just wanted to leave an impact in the world. Like, I wanted to be a teacher at some point because I'm like, I just want to teach people and leave an impact. But now my focus is not being a teacher. But, like, I am, in a sense, being a teacher because oh, yeah. I am leaving an impact and I'm teaching people life skills. And I'm teaching people to be yourself. Go after what you want and, like, don't let anyone stop you. You know what I mean? And, like, I'm teaching my siblings, hey, listen, you can be successful in whatever you decide to do. Like, yeah, go to school. But, like, if that's not for you, make sure you got a plan and you come with me. Come to me with a strict plan of like what you got going on and what you want to do and i'm gonna support you you know what i mean Michelle, that's a beautiful thing the oldest of nine yeah wow what's that like it's, it's, <laughs> i'm you know, the oldest you feel like oh, nine he said that like i'm that guy i'm not gonna I know, lie he said they, that like that's, that's just they, not normal yeah, they be doing it yeah well, like, that's how, how, uh, if I, how many how many siblings you have and then you'd be like oh no nice. that's the way you said wow. it too the question oh yeah uh, the question you right. know, what's you that phrase, like what's that like i'm the, I'm the like? oldest of seven though so like i'm, I'm the oldest of seven so it's yeah. not it really like, doesn't feel like that many of us but i love all my siblings i love them they're so much fun mm -hmm. is there we like a, a level of is there a level of like pressure that comes with being oh, the oldest for you 100 yeah does that lot. does that fuel you or does that because like for me it fueled me like that pressure to be like okay i'm the first one to graduate college i'm the first one to like yeah. leave the house i'm the first one to do this to do that so i gotta do it the best so i, that, I think at, at one point i think the pressure was kind of like taken over yeah. <laughs> because i feel oh, like yeah. i didn't know what i was doing with my life and i was confused i didn't have a purpose but like now I, every day i wake up with a purpose and mm -hmm. i i'm grateful to be a role model for them and they remind me of that all the time so it's a beautiful thing mashallah hamza you you're the oldest you middle yeah, child i got an older sister yeah but that's, you that's technically you're the oldest. That's my dog. Guy, you, that's you're my technically dog the too. oldest. Huh? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's my dog huh? too. I'm like the thing is is my you're oldest, the oldest sister, guy. Yeah, I'm the oldest guy. So like, she had that like, yo, make sure these niggas are straight. Mm. And mine was like, yo, you you gotta make it out. Yeah, it's so your like, responsibility now. Yeah, so like the idea of like school and like all that educational formal stuff. Because like I didn't get the like if I told my dad I was doing spoken word full time, he would be like, hell no. Yeah. So like the idea is just like yo, like no, she does what she got to do, but you, you're like the the one child that we're gonna focus all every effort to yeah. get that degree on. Yeah. So, so that was a little that was a little stressful. I feel like that's why I did the podcast a lot later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the idea is just like I had to do a I had to do the get to the finish line and yeah. then move back to get to my own finish line. Wow. Which yeah. is pretty hard, but I love that though. I feel like it was your journey, and that's how it's supposed to be. And I think also like I just wanted to add a side note, like me. Well, going back to like, I was really good at school. I loved school. I thought that was my only thing. But at some point I decided, hey, listen, I don't even know what I'm doing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I was done. I was like, I've done this. This is all I've known for so many years. Mm -hmm. So I took a break. But like, ultimately, my love was always there and I wanted to do it. And like, even now, like I'm working, I'm doing all these things, but I'm back in school. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying, hey, listen, just go off. And like, I mean, that works too. But like, <laughs> you can literally 
do whatever you want and mm. like you can juggle all these things like it's hard it's stressful but well it's possible and it's oh, yeah. doable 100%. bro i'm not gonna lie though well i feel like having a degree and having a career that i know can it's just like can keep me to like 90 like alhamdulillah like when it comes to money and stuff yeah i'm not stressing about like yo where where am i gonna be in five years yeah that takes off so much pressure to where i can like full throttle the creative side because mm-hmm. the idea bro i'm not gonna lie well and i know like people don't like to talk about this but especially with a lot of creatives it's the idea of like yo i gotta make it out i gotta get money i gotta do this yeah. i got there's a whole yeah. bunch of stressed out people that are kicking it together mm-hmm. uh-huh. you know what i mean 100 <laughs> percent. it's a lot of it's a lot of adrenaline yeah. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. the idea it's just like yo like i like you said, there's ups and downs, right? So, like, yo, I might be up one week, but, like, the next week, like, I don't know where my food's going to come in. Mm-hmm. So that you're in a stressed out situation. Okay. Alhamdulillah, like, I don't have to deal with that anymore. So, shout out to Abdul Malik Oscar. You my nigga. <laughs> oh, that's my, hey, you my dog, too. <laughs> I, I, and then that's my dad. I, so. got, I, got, I got, that's my guy, man. That's good. That is my guy. But I know what you mean, Wallahi. And, I, Wallahi, you're not lying when you said, like, Allah is the best of planners. When I was younger, like, I thought it was weird. I was like, damn, ho, you don't believe in my plans? Like, just for me as in uh, just speaking for myself the way i i function is like i'm like almost crazy about my goals and like okay Same. i'm gonna accomplish it and then like i get real defensive and you know that too like mm-hmm. whenever because like I, 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 I graduated yeah i graduated <laughs> with like a political science degree and economics degree and like as soon as you say that niggas faces go oh what's next damn. muhammad they're like damn nigga how you gonna find a job in that degree nigga right like damn nigga what you gonna do with that you know i'm gonna start like, saying what's that like what's that like <laughs> what's, that? <laughs> what's that like you know um the midwest in me sometimes jumps yeah. off but i take a well i like it becomes a thing to me where i'm like you, you don't believe in me you don't think i can do it i'm gonna prove you wrong so when i was younger like i wanted to act i wanted to model i wanted to write i wanted to do all these things and like it wasn't that my parents didn't believe in me i, I know that they did deep down and i know that like I know that they loved it when I did do it too. They like, just didn't get it. They one, they didn't get it, and two, it, for them, they're like they're thinking about, <laughs> and I and I appreciate Bro, st- it now. Sustainability, sustainability. Yeah, yeah they're thinking about like we, we love the fact that you like to act, nigga. But how you gonna feed yourself? <laughs> yeah, nigga, right? exactly. That's the, that's how they was thinking. And now that I'm I'm older, and I and I alhamdulillah I got this degree, <clears> and I like he said, it's taking the stress off of of the fact that. Like, then I can be like, I right, bet then I'm about to with this degree that I have, I'm about Yo, to get but a does job. that give you work ethic though? Let's really be honest. Hell yeah! Because and I was thinking about what you said too—the fact that you had to finish the first finish line, come back, back on and circle back. That makes you gangster as fuck, nigga. You yeah. basically live in two lives. You pushing, <laughs> right. you pushing, you pushing two agendas at the same time. You're doing you everything that you want us to do. Ex- exactly. Um. So well, I think I appreciate it now a lot because it it made me the man I am today. And it, like I said, it gave me the opportunity to like have food on the table, not worry about that. And as the oldest guy too, you thinking about, okay, well, how am I going to feed my family? Like a goal yeah, for me was always make sure Hoya <clears throat> is good. She don't ever have to like think about nothing. She can take trips. And, and that's just eats you too. Yeah, it does. But I feel like a lot Every of Somali year, men don't get, like to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, they get older and older and older. And like, like a clock that I have in my head is like, I have to make sure my mom gets comfortable one but two there's a mental clock of like my mom has to see me successful mm-hmm. in the things that i love and care about that's important to me you know what i mean and like as she gets older like i said my mom's like 54 now 55 like alhamdulillah she's healthy everything's good but like you start thinking about that because i don't want to be at 55 finally i go to hoi hoi look uh, i'm on broadway um, but yeah, well, yeah, there is that stress. What, what for you? What was that like with your parents? It's just like now that you're modeling. I, I mean, obviously, I would assume. I don't know your parents, but I would assume like there was a conversation that had to happen, and 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 it was a little bit different than like if Samantha was like, "Hey, mom, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. go out and mo- model," you know. So oh, for sure. Um, I think one thing my mom like always knew that like. I was that child, like, again, going back, I tried everything, and mm. I, I, I would literally have a new, like, I'm just going to run the same things, but, like, I was always just trying things, and to them, it was astonishing, because it was like, what is this girl doing? <laughs> like, yeah. it's always something, you know? So she wasn't surprised, like, she knew, she's like, this has always been right up your alley, but she was just kind of like, but where's the longevity in this? Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. so, like, how, what, where are you going with this like so so are you gonna be able to make a living out of this mm-hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. as a regular and to her it was always like so are you gonna finish school <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what i mean so at first she definitely did not get like she, i'm not gonna say she didn't support it but she definitely wasn't like 100 percent on board like mm-hmm. she was just like and i was just like mom listen like again like going back to what you were saying yeah. i believe in myself like 
so hard yeah, like i'm crazy, like yeah. for me if i have a goal if i have something i want to do just know what's gonna happen like 100 because i'll put my all into that to make it happen so i was like you know what i'm gonna show her <laughs> like mm-hmm. i'm gonna show her i can do this so once she obviously started seeing like the financial part of it like she was like yeah. okay like, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm she's like, okay yeah. and then when she saw that i was like also back in school and doing this like she was even more happy so she's like okay cool like do Are your you, thing yeah. do y'all think y'all gonna raise your kids different with like a different sense of pressure no not really i feel like i, I will i will so yeah, yeah I with, will. with me it's <laughs> it's gonna be the way i go about it is gonna be different i'm gonna be more nurturing more caring there's gonna be more yeah. conversations that yes. happen but I'm not going to be the dad that's like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Just go do that. I'm always, because what's important as a parent, I'm not a parent, but like, I would assume. Yeah, I thought you was a granddad. <laughs> oh, that's that's so perfect. <laughs> so like, let me tell y'all, gang. So I was at Walmart today, right? And I'm like, yo, we about to have a fashion icon <laughs> on the show. Nigga. You know what I'm saying? Very well dressed, mashallah, like Thanks. doing her thing. And I, I was like, I got, I gotta come on the show with a, with a fashion statement. For those of you who don't know, I'm like, I'm the biggest troll there is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like, I like to just fuck with people. I like wearing shit that makes people go, huh? What does that even mean? You know? So my shirt says, I don't know if you can see it. Can I see it, Thunder? Hold on, hold on, gang. They gotta see this. Hey, mind you, we just did dangerous, so I'm not. I'm wearing the same clothes because he changed. I right? let me just get that shout out. Hey, this might be another podcast with niggas the same day. We right? did it the same day, but I took I took it off grinding, and I put this on because I was like, first of all, I'm the best grandpa ever. First of all, that's a fact. Second of all, think of me as a grandpa. I, I'll be those crazy ass grandpas that just wears the, the fedora <laughs> and just says the most outlandish shit randomly. Come here, come here, little nigga. Let me give you a dollar, nigga. Right. How you gonna raise your kids? My kids. Well, I, I back to that. Um, I think what was important for me, and I think we all three of us can agree with this, is like when you're somebody who's highly ambitious and just like obsessive about your goals, you become very forward thinking, right? And in your mind, like your goals are almost attainable. They almost exist because you think about them so much because you replay it so much. Whenever I achieve a goal. It almost feels like, well, I deja vu because in my head, I replay it over and over and over again of me being there, the steps I'm going to take to get there, right? But in reality, it doesn't always work out that way. So a parent is really good where they can tell you, hey, I love you. I believe in your goals. I think all of this is important and I think you should continue to do it, right? But I also love you enough to tell you that what you're trying to do isn't 100% right? As an individual, you have to be a multifaceted individual where if things don't work out, and I think what helped me a lot with that is athletics. Because as an athlete, you think in your head, nigga, I'm going to make it. I will. I have to make it. There is no other choice, right? But you can't put all your eggs in your in that one basket because mm-hmm. the minute you tear your ACL, the minute you get a surgery your senior year, whatever happens, shit goes left real quick. But I think for me, what I want to do is be that nurturing parent where my kid is just so multifaceted that like if they don't make it in this they'll make it in this and if they don't make it in this they'll make it in this and despite all that they'll be very well educated um the dean is going to be on lock their mental health is going to be on lock so that whatever that they're going through it won't be hard for them it won't be tough for them you know what i mean and while i was thinking about this the other day too is like our parents had dreams bro Mm -hmm. that's what blows my mind sometimes is like our parents were actually kids at one point that were like just kicking it, dreaming about, reminiscing about, yeah, I want to be a writer when I grow up. I want to be a model when I grow up. I want to interview people when I grow up. And they had to put all that aside. Some people didn't have, you know, the financial liberty to just to just dream and to just write books and, and sit on a podcast for two hours and just talk about their life and whatever is going on. Don't get me wrong. It's all very important. But well, alhamdulillah to that, that we get to live like that and... Yeah, I think that's that's the approach that I would take. Again, I'm not a parent. I yeah. know for a fact <laughs> shit is going to go left. No, I agree, though. Yeah. I shit. agree with both of those things. Because, like, one thing I'm going to say is, like, my mom has never been wrong. So yeah. oh, anything yeah. she's oh, ever yeah. told me has, like, it might have taken me a few years to, like, see it. You know yeah. what I mean? But, like, she's always right. But another thing, too, is, like, I think believing in your kids, like, all the time mm. and wholeheartedly as much as they believe in themselves is so important. I don't know if you guys watched the Kanye documentary. Oh, yeah. That's that documentary was amazing 
beautiful like the way his mother believed in him Mm -hmm. like that's why that man is his confidence you know what i mean like she believed in him so much and like that goes a long way like that nurture and that love like you were saying also like that goes a very long way Mm -hmm. but of course like you know we can't blame our parents like they were their parents for the first time like they don't know what they're doing they're in a whole different world like different language you know what i mean different language like they're adjusting so they did their absolute best you know what i mean like And went beyond as well. Beyond, no, yeah. for shout, shout out to Oscar again. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm shout not gonna to lie. Oscar. Shout because out to Donda West too. Remember when that documentary came out? What did I do? I told the both of y'all, nigga, y'all need to watch. Phenomenal, this shit. phenomenal. This shit is. Beautiful. I need to watch. I haven't yeah. watched. I'm not even gonna lie. Watch well, it. Shout watch out to it. Kanye though. Very inspiring. <laughs> and you'll see it. Kanye yeah. is Kanye. That nigga thinks he's the the coldest nigga on the planet. And like it's not because of the success, it's because of the confidence his mom. Yeah, his so mom put into him. He, but he the, also put in a whole bunch of work. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. But that's like what pushed him to put in that put work. In that work. So the idea mother. of him thinking like, "Yo, I could actually do this shit," gave him the fuel to put to in the work. To keep going. Hundred percent. Like 100%. something crazy Jay Z said was like when they asked him about Kanye, like this is later, 2017, 2018. He laughed and he was like, "Yeah, bro." Y'all just now meeting Kanye, but Kanye has been Kanye his entire life. And you see it in yeah. the documentary. You see it in that he's 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 talking the same shit. He's arrogant, all the same bullshit, confident. confident, all of that. Every time I think of that, I think of Dave Chappelle talking about the first time he met Kanye. Yeah, did he tell you the story? Yeah. <laughs> so he was in a um, he was in a he was in the studio. No, they were watching the the Chappelle show, like un, unreleased cuts of the Chappelle mm-hmm. show. And, and this somebody, before Kanye was, like, I don't think he had a song. Did he have? No, this was this was producer Kanye. Producer Kanye. Oh, so yeah. this is like he was making money. Mm-hmm. He had like those like platinum singles. But he out, wasn't Kanye. But he wasn't famous. He wasn't known. Um, but he was. This is in that era. If you watch the documentary, it's like the, the first producer. episode. The yeah. first episode where he's like shopping it. He's running around. He's telling people, Yo, 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 buy my shit, buy my shit, listen to my shit. But he's in the he's in the studio with Dave Chappelle, uh, Dave Chappelle and he's watching it and somebody calls him and he picks up the phone and he goes hello and he's like yeah where are you and he's like oh yeah I'm, I'm with Dave Chappelle right now we're watching uncut uh, unedited uh, versions of the Chappelle show and he goes my life is amazing and I do cool shit now, and they he, asked him and they asked him they're like he paused for a little bit yeah he pa- like someone responded with some oh yeah that's great da, 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 da. How, like how how the hell are you in there with Dave Chappelle yeah he's like cause my life is amazing and I do cool shit and then he did the phone. He, I can't do it with the <laughs> iPhone but he did the click <laughs> period but yeah that guy I don't know, bro. Well, I, that guy is incredible. Just to yeah. think about like the shit that he's been through and and mm-hmm. where he had to come from to to go to where he want where he is right now. That nigga's a billionaire. Yeah. Shit's wild, bro. Yeah. That's, that's I I need I love talking to creators mm-hmm. and creatives mm-hmm. and just people who just do something and like craft something and just make something out of nothing. Like you are like an embodiment of like Emma Somari Somarte that just like mm-hmm. a father, right? And now your face. A little girl mm-hmm. is looking at it and be like, "Damn, like she looks just like me." Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. And that, like, I don't know what I like. I love you could work a cube life for the rest of your life, and you know, mm-hmm. if you're comfortable with that, that's dope. That's dope. If that's mm-hmm. how you got to pay the bills. But damn, if you if you're doing something you love, mm-hmm. and like you're you're grinding at it and you're Priceless. winning at it. Oh, we gotta have you on a podcast. Yes, <laughs> sir. We gotta talk to you about that it. That makes you a goat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That really does make you a goat. And well, I mashallah, you're you're definitely you're a goat. Um, you know, mean, we I mean. give we like Hamza always says, this is Hamza. Hamza has his own segment and we haven't made it a thing yet, but it's called flowers. You know, he gives flowers I on love the show. That. And well, you have to give people yeah, their you flowers. Have to. Yeah, and he he tells them like, yo, like mashallah, you're doing this and you're doing that and and like I'm kind of stealing that from him right now. Now it's my <laughs> it's my turn to do that. But yeah, well, like, mashallah, you're doing your thing. And, Thanks, guys. I um, appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me too. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. It's nice to break the ambiance. So this is a vibe. Yeah. Shout out to Thunder. Shout out, yeah. big shout out to Thunder. Big yeah, shout out to deer and shit. Just every once in a while, just comes. Oh, in. I gotta show you the video. This is a really. Did beautiful you see the video? video. No. no. I'm gonna show you the, hold on. Let me show you this video. It was a deer. Hey, yo, send it to send it to Mahab, please. I know, right? Because they gotta put this. Mahab, shit up. play this like right so, here, but bro. like Mahab, yeah, don't, play it. Mahab, don't put like my don't put my voice in it because I'm like I'm in the back. Like, look at this, look at this fucking, look at this deer. <laughs> just being very 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 south side. Very very south side. About it. Look at this thing. <laughs> that motherfucking thing. He, he probably like. Right, do you live in this neighborhood? He's probably like. Look at how beautiful this shit is. Look where this nigga is. It's the backyard right here. No, it's beautiful. Even when I was driving up, I was like, what? Oh, wow. They're oh, like it's a right. gang. They was yeah. kicking it. Yeah. But like, <laughs> you know, like, if they were right there, that's the crazy part. No, mashallah. Well, I am beautiful. 
Majestic. I love the vibe. Majestic. Majestic. So wait, we had you. Was it two years ago? Yeah. Did you do the not the Sephora thing, but did you mm-hmm. have that gig? I don't remember when then? that was. Damn, I don't remember. I feel like that's like when I started out. So probably not. I can't remember though. No, I feel like we're along this journey. Oh yeah, I it's love that. It was North Dakota. I, I live, yeah. I, and I gotta Dinner. know about that. You, got, yeah. <laughs> you gotta go figure but, out what happened in Fargo. I know. Ooh, Fargo, North Dakota. Yeah. Wow. There's a lot. Of, there's Hawaii's up there for sure. Oh, a lot. Yeah. yeah. A um, lot of like newcomers. So is it Sioux Falls? Sioux Falls, North that's Dakota. South Dakota. Yeah, South Dakota. That's where a lot of Somali people. That's where my yeah. dad came, and the nigga always he calls it Sufalis. <laughs> Sufalis, North Dakota, South Dakota, I'm South Dakota. And I'm like, my nigga, where is Sufalis? I remember doing a <laughs> doing a project where they're like your Sufilis. family tree, you know? They're like, okay, tell us about like your dad where he came. I'm like, yeah, my dad came to this place, and first he was like over here, and then and he Sufilis. came to he came to Sufalis, and they're like. Where is Sufalis? Where is that? What's that like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hmm. Let's do Sufalis. Sounds it's like uh, a country in Africa. What's is, that like? <laughs> do they have water in Sufalis? All right. Oh my goodness. I can't. Being being Somali is crazy. One time somebody asked me, "Oh, Somalia?" They're like, "Where are you from?" I was like, "I'm from Somalia." And they're like, "Oh, no." First, it's you know this too. You probably deal with this shit all the time because mm-hmm. you out there modeling. You probably around people who haven't seen some eyes but they're like they look up there like where are you from and you go oh i'm from minneapolis minnesota i'm from st paul whatever right and then you go no where are you from from oh 100 percent. Like, where are you from from and i'm like i'm from somalia this, this <laughs> no lady. i'm not gonna lie you know i got that so much in this like natural to the point where like now i tell them listen i live in minnesota but mm. originally i'm from somalia because yeah. i'm like i already uh, know what you're gonna ask me yeah. <laughs> so let me just it. let you know yeah i'm an asshole though i'll be bothering people i'm like i'm from minneapolis and they're like oh where are you from from oh i'm from minnesota like that's in the midwest and they're like oh but and where are you they, from they from? start getting awkward because they're like damn am i prying like no way yeah i mean like um, but where's your family from yeah and then i get real vague i'm like oh, i'm from africa and they're like oh Okay, and they're just looking at you like, nigga, we know that, but where in Africa? <laughs> Most shaggy like, left the okay now. But the lady was like, oh, is that uh, is Somalia? Is that next to Mexico? And I'm like, do I look like I'm from next to Mexico? <laughs> I was like, no, I did not, fam. Yo, uh, I did have one question. I feel like we're wrapping up, but one question being traveling mm-hmm. and posting on Instagram, stuff like, like, you know, like there's digital creators that travel the world, mm-hmm. take photos, and get paid off it, right? Mm-hmm. Would you, could you ever see yourself doing that? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I just feel like I don't really travel like that. <laughs> I mean, I go like to like the same places, um, but I would love to. I feel like, why not? Any way you can like market and make money. Top, like, top five places you want to visit. <sighs> okay, um, I want to go to Italy. Like, that's hell number one. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, the colonizers. <laughs> yeah, the col- <laughs> I want to go to Italy. I want to go to Bali and Thailand. Mm I've always wanted to go um, to Bali. Yeah, I'm gonna list places I've never been. Cause Where's Bora Bora? My bad. Go ahead, finish. Oh, Bora Bora. Well, I had a friend there. named Bora Bora, and really? we always really? used to clown him. I just, he was from Africa, the Bahamas. Really? I don't really? know. Cause Wait, I just, is it? I is heard it? the Bahamas is close. I heard it in a little Dirk song, and I know niggas be saying that all the time. They'd yeah, that's like, like a you know honeymoon destination. Bora, <laughs> yeah. Nah. yeah. Bora. Go ahead. Finish it's beautiful. Your, okay, what did I say? Um, said Italy, Bali. Italy, Bali, Thailand. Um, definitely Somalia because I've never been. You've never been? Yeah, I've never been. I want to go though. I'm trying to go with like all my siblings and like my cousins. Oh, that'd be a vibe. Yeah, I I, I want to go there deep so we can like stick together. Have, <laughs> yo, I'm over here. Oh, she's trying to have a great time. She's trying to bring all of no, them no, for no, safety they, purposes. We, no, we need to stick together. You know what I mean? She said one of us get hit is out of eight. Yeah, and percentage. then uh, last place. Oh, I really want to go to um. I've been seeing this. I think it's in South Africa, Zanzibar. Mm. Zanzibar. Yeah, Zanzibar. I want to go there. Is this just the name though? No, Zanzibar. it's beautiful. Like you've seen it before? Beautiful. Zanzibar. There'd be some places that niggas just like to say. No, no, no. Wallahi, yeah. beautiful. That's Bora Bora. Zanzibar. By the way, I looked up Bora Bora. Where is it? And it didn't, but the, the search didn't help. It made me more confused. It said Polynesia. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck Polynesia is. I know Polynesia I'm ge- sauce. I'm geographically challenged. Me so. too. Uh, Polynesia <laughs> sauce be busting. Fire. Though. Yeah, them niggas But do. I don't think it's in the bahamas i think it's in like asia asia, asia yeah. malaha like yeah yeah we're gonna go someday to bar bar ghost talk episode 
in Bora Bora. In Bora Bora. We're going to interview. With did you just say that's like a honeymoon honeymoon spot? Where is it? Yeah. I don't know that's if I want to go with him. I don't know if I want to go with Muhammad huh? Salad. Yeah. I don't know if it's I want to go with this you nigga look to Bora, it up. Bora Bora, though. No, Zanzibar. Look up I'll Zanzibar. I'll go to Zanzibar, which I don't know about Bora Bora, though. Beautiful. What? I th- like rose petals why? and shit. <laughs> rose petals, nigga? For what? For she said it's like in a, the pool. She said it, uh, it's a honeymoon spot. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm tired. So are we getting married? What's going on? I'm in shit. Yeah, but then I... Oh, hi, well, I'm new. Go get married. I'll come with you. I'll be your best man. You want to be my best man? Yeah, I'll be your best man. I have like in... We're not... Yo, Bob Cass and the Green Make sure I'm invited, too. What? Oh, yeah. To the honeymoon? You no. are you are now <laughs> to, the wedding, to the honeymoon. What are you about? Do you know what the honeymoon is? What's good? Not really. Honeymoon is shakat times. I have between you and the wife. It's supposed to be private. Besha <laughs> Alisa, you do your thing. You're not supposed to have a third party at the honeymoon, brother. Nah, you tripping? No, you know what I'm saying, right? Yo, do you know how these girls have like best friends and shit? Bro, I be worried about that shit sometimes though. Why? Like, because listen, bro, I'm not going to lie. Friends are important. Friends okay, are okay. Friends are very important. Shout out to friends. Good yeah. friends are also fucked up. No, yeah. good friends are important. Yeah. Friends will set you up. Oh, friends will get you. Friends will come on your honeymoon. Wallahi. See, that's like. the thing. But I saw <laughs> look the thing is face. look look. This is the thing though. I what saw t- I saw TikTok. TikTok is a crazy place. Though. Oh yeah, yeah really still is. though that shit was just fucked me up a lot. I was like, yo, I gotta make sure what she happened? got no best best friend. Mm-hmm. So what happened was. And she had a bunch of videos and shit with her best friend, right? Mm-hmm. Boom, was her, her best friend, bow, bow. <laughs> Valley Fair, nigga. Yeah. They're eating out. They're just having a great time. Two girls that are best friends, right? Yeah. Boom, a nigga comes in, right? Dun, one dun, of them marries dun. a friend. Boom. Now, one friend is married. The other one is single, right? Yeah. You think shit fun have just like separate a little bit, right? Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. There's three of them in the picture, right? They have Valley Fair together. They, uh, they go to Honeymoon. Shorty ass is there with him. Oh, oh no, no, no. That oh. friend ain't got akhlaq. That's akhlaq not, nice. No. <laughs> she tripping. Uh, what do you well, mean? That's, that's, that's crazy. What but yo, if you be best friends with her best friend, though, that's how you stay. Really? That's true. <sighs> so you say tap dead. Nah, because it's just like you best friends with if her. If the best she friend, friend be is on your side, you good. You if good? the best friend don't fuck with you, But if the best friend bad. don't fuck with you, yeah. what happens? See then later, you. Yo, hold up, Sahib. No, you know that shit? No, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say I don't know shit, Zahid. Bro, you, no, the, but, that's the, uh, but that's the oldest trick. Bro, you got to make sure the best friend fucks with you. I'm hakana. Hey, you cute. You want to be friends? That's all I know. I'm in the voicemails like this. Because 90% nah, the best, of the time, the, she going to the best friend to go uh, talk to her. The best friend giving her advice. And the best friend, the one that's like either going to be like, why are you talking to this oh, yeah. relationship? Oh. Or she's going to be like, nigga, your nigga ain't shit. Go talk to, to this nigga. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Or like when you she fuck up. She could be up. on your side or she oh. could... Yeah, when you fuck up, it can either be oh, everybody make mistakes. Yeah, okay. or so, yeah, girl, fuck, lead that man. Lead that man. He ain't shit. He ain't shit. He don't deserve you. <laughs> he don't do shit. He don't buy you nothing. <laughs> he don't be taking one of those, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck no, I don't do him type, fam. But ask the question. Oh yeah. So, well, I be like, it's been an absolute pleasure. You are now a part of the Goat's Talk family. Yes. We like this now. You know what I'm saying? We like this. Yeah. So, um, inshallah, we want to have you back in a year's time. Um, you're going to be America's next top model by then. Inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. 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 We're going to hopefully be in a little bit better place. Uh, maybe hopefully some we'll better. be there. You yeah. know what I mean? Wearing suits and shit. Like, yeah, Damn, y'all made it with me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're going to be. No see, our lights going to be working and shit. Ooh, goddamn. Is there a ghost down here? This shit flickering. See that shit? No, there's an I'm not gonna do the whole thing. Huh? Say what well, lies my foot. I'm reading no, eyes to myself, yeah. Um, <laughs> come on now. Yo, this guy's a clown. Can I say you guys, you guys have really great um chemistry as like hosts. Yeah. That's, like like that's good to hear because I don't really like this nigga like that. No, you guys will like I watch I all just, your videos. And I know he like a shooting star, so now could they go? No, I really watch all you guys' videos, and you guys have really, really great chemistry. Thank you so it's much. It's like a good, you guys just gel vibe. well together. Yeah, I appreciate that. And we try to like make guests as comfortable as possible. Yeah, yeah. It feels like, like a that. conversation. It's very yeah. that's how it should relaxed. Be, exactly. That's really how it should be. So, and yeah. I like that. Inshallah, in a year's you. time, um, when we blow up, it's still like that. We don't turn into like some when asshole. When it's up and it's stuck. Yes, sir. Um, but in a year's time, inshallah, where do you, where do you see yourself being in, in all aspects, just like with yourself personally, with your career, whatever it may be, your mental health. Uh, okay. I don't like these kind of questions. Like, I don't like feel like in five years, where do you see yourself in what? I don't know. I uh, hopefully alive. I know that's very cliche, but inshallah, hopefully alive and doing well and still doing what I love and comfortably living. 
Go, do you have any? Go, do you have anything that's? Up, mm, I remember you said that you don't like to talk about what's upcoming. Yeah. Just in case it doesn't happen, is there something that you have set in stone? Anything can change. Um, I am working promote? on things that are like out. I, I don't want to say anything right now, mm, but this? um, it's it's actually outside of my modeling. Um, but it's just like some community engage stuff that i'm working on alongside with like um some of the family members um so i'm excited about that but i don't want to say anything right now okay we're gonna keep it at that yeah. we appreciate you well thank i you. thank you for coming on of course um please pan in on our co-host's chair the best grandpa Oscar, Oscar ever we don't know where he went <laughs> but again thank you so much yeah, thank you